Hey. Can you hear me? You're muted. I can hear you. Cool. I'm um just playing around with this uh whiteboard thing. Okay, I'm gonna be muted for an Unless you need me to talk, because I have con contractors here making a lot of noise. Okay, no worries. I'm waiting for other people to come in. Can we still sometime, maybe next week, um, do some realtor calls so you can teach me? Yeah. You want to do one live today? Mm, today's not a good day. We found uh -huh. some bad news out about the house we just bought. It's a money pit. So we're dealing with all that. And, oh, no. Yeah. Where'd you buy a house at? Up in Columbia City on the lake. But um, there's been some leaks and in the lower level, and we're gonna start arbitration against the seller now. It's oh just, no, man! Yeah, that's horrible. That's yes, awful. that is. That's how people were in. I like your logos for the marketing camp. Oh, Adorable. thank you. Thank you. I just threw it together. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you did. You're good at that stuff. <laughs> I'm not good at that stuff. Well, there is literally a use case for... You can take any idea or concept and turn it into... A marketing campaign it's really wild I I mean when I wake up in the morning I wake up really early and when I wake up in the morning like four o'clock in the morning I the the things that make me jump out of bed without an alarm is as soon as my I become conscious again <laughs> um I start thinking of all these ideas I mean, I have notebook after notebook after notebook after notebook of how to how to sell real estate, how to originate loans, and uh, you know how to put it all together. How to go into any market, whether you've lived there your whole life or you just moved there. It's crazy. The things that come across my brain is crazy. Yeah, that's exciting. So, I mean, it's eleven thirty-five. I can just start sharing with you because I'm recording it. I can post this on the group or in the group. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Whether or not people come or not. Um, it was like, a, it was a spinoff from yesterday because uh, yesterday we were on for like 40 minutes or so and um, people started to have to leave. So I said, well, you know, a couple of the LOs had some questions like, how do I do this? Or how do I do that? I'm like, I'll jump on another zoom after the call if you want and show you how to use this template or whatever. And then it just spun into, okay, well, I'll just come back on tomorrow, 1130. So whether they come, yeah. it doesn't matter. Um, but I did tell them in the group that um, you were going to be here. So mm -hmm. for, for anybody that watches this video after I post it to the group, Colleen is coming over from a different mortgage company, a different broker. And um, I worked with her in the past at a previous company. And Colleen's going to come over um, 
as a teammate so I can give all of my loans to her while I focus on other things like my pro genie and obviously Shauna's marketing camp. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I want to show Colleen and anybody else that watches it after I've um, after the recording stops that you can use the Canva templates that I created for not only getting buyers and sellers, that's the obvious use case, right? But for recruiting, recruiting uh, edge LOs or recruiting people to your team. Um, and you can help help build the people in that you recruit over the edge because it is your, ultimately the way Edge is set up. If you recruit a new LO, experienced or not, you you as the recruiter are responsible for building that person, building their production, building building them up, right? So you can use the templates to um, not only train LOs that may may not be at your skill level but also to go out and recruit from other brokerages that we're competing with to help Edge grow altogether. So you can use templates for that. But obviously the second use case other than getting new buyers is getting new agents in your marketplace to work with you. You can take some of these templates and co-brand the templates with um, an agent in the marketplace and help them build their business. And then they are forever indebted to you and they see, you know, more than the lender that has a hundred options, they see you as a valuable business partner that's going to help them grow their business. And then the other use case that I wanted to talk about is LOA training. So on these templates, there's a there's um two templates I want to bring to your um your your thoughts and or to your um awareness. The first one is the textable um, mortgage status update. I don't know why this is so large. I'll change it in a minute. <laughs> textable mortgage status updates. Um, you can use this template to train LOA where you, if your LOA has been notified or the processor, but LOA mainly, this is, would be their job. Um if you can train the LOA to um, send out a text message to the people in the transaction, the buyer and the buyer's agent and possibly the listing agent, if you don't have specific data in the text templates, um, like you can make a generic template, like with the rate, like without the rate, without the appraised value, without that stuff that the listing agent can see, but you can also create a very custom template for specific to that borrower's transaction with their rate, with their appraised value and things like that, that the listing agent can't see. So, um, you know, or the buyer agent, some people do not want the buyer's agent to know their appraised value. So you can use the textable mortgage templates for that, but you can also use, um, the, uh, there was, um, the document list it's textable this checklist is super important because if you can throw this into your processes now i do have a template a uh, presentation that explains to a borrower borrower facing the 48 hour process i established with my loa a couple of years ago um and i'll be happy to share that with you as well but the documents checklist Sometimes a buyer will see the portal um, and, you know, especially if you're using lending pad or arrive or anything like that, there's pre-built document requests in there, like W-2s, bank statements, 60 days bank statements, um, two years W-2s. If they're getting a non-QM loan or a bank statement only loan, those templates do not apply to them. Um, or those document requests don't apply to them. So then you have to backtrack and go back to the borrower and be like, okay, you're going to see a spot to upload your W-2s, just disregard that. So it's a lot of backtracking on, on some of those um, portals. But if you can create a textable um, document checklist specific for mortgage type, 
then you have eliminated a lot of the repetitive conversation, repetitive emails. Well, why do I have to upload W-2s? I already told you I don't have a W-2. That kind of thing. Um, and this will save you so much time. So I just wanted to share this with the people that are going to watch this video. Um, but in the meantime, I am going to uh, share my screen and jump on Canva. Um, can you see my Canva, Colleen? Okay. So I was asked two times already to create a how-to guide for social media posts. And I'm literally writing this ebook right now. So I just wanted to share with you that I have started that um, because there's been two people that asked me to write that book already. So I'm going to do that. Um, but also, I figured it would be really cool to share with Colleen um, as a LO coming over. She she's never seen my Canva templates before. Not like like not like this. Um, but I wanted to show her something like this. If let me just ask you, Colleen, if you were to get a template set like this, um, think about all of the ways that you could go into your marketplace and get a realtor to work with you. Okay. Um, for example, there is this template, this uh, home buyer process, um, the home sales, open houses, all this information and data, like these are super generic, but we can make them um, relevant to our area. And then we can also, like you don't even have to use all of the templates. You can just say, you know what? I like this one for now, real estate charts. I like this one for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my real estate partner look like, the master, the go-to realtor in my area as her LO partner. And I'm going to say, you know, these are like, let's just say this one is um, list to sale price ratio. And this one is um, number of expired listings. Okay, so if you were going to, if you were going to use this template, you could literally brand your agent, put your agent's photo right here. Um, let me see. This is Tammy. I work with her. Um, and you could um, put her picture in here and you can literally make her look like the expert in whatever area she's in. And you can change all of this stuff. You could say um, my list of sale price ratio was like 99.6%. And um, if you wanted to say like, um, just like in this one, you could say expert. This is the connection of when the expert meets ratios, right? So this is the area where that they intersect, okay? And then this one can be um, zero. You know, um, so now you can literally take her data. You could say, hey, Tammy, give me the last, you know, 90 day MLS report from your MLS showing your stats or the last 12 months showing your stats. And um, you could make her be the expert in the area based on this information. We could show the, this could be downloaded as a JPEG and literally uploaded to your social media and you can tag her. Um, you can create a Facebook group for just you and the agents that work with you and use these templates to say, who wants one? Send me your send me your data um, from your MLS about you and I'll create this for you. No problem. I love helping my agents grow. Things like that will literally make you different in your marketplace than any other loan officer that they have ever used in their life, in their entire career, because they're, they're just not doing this stuff. Um, yeah, that's then, amazing. Yeah, I mean, that's just one template, right? What if mm -hmm. I did, you know, you could do like real estate, you know, um, like average rent 
average home value, just sold averages. And you can co-brand this for Colleen and your specific agent partner. Um, you could you could do that, right? And there's all these templates in here that you can literally just manipulate to make your partner look like the go-to person. You can even, um, you know, present a brand new listing. You can, you know, you could do, uh, I don't even know what this would represent, but uh, you could change the data here. There's a way to edit the chart. Um, you can do whatever you want to, you know, promote a listing, but that's just one of the templates. So if I go back out here and I go to, um, let's go to, these are the textable branded updates that I was telling you about in that um, thing for LOA training. So you, this is a, um, these are the, the 20, I said 15, but it's 20. Like, congrats, you're approved. You could download this, all 20 of these as, as images to your cell phone. And as long as like this one right here has date specific stuff, what they locked in at, and you know, insert rate, insert loan amount, you can make them custom to the borrower, or you can just use the things of the status updates and send them a text that is already in your phone. And you can send the same text to everybody. Maybe like a lot of the times I'll create a group chat with the realtor and the buyer. And I'll say, you know, congratulations, uh, Jana, you've been approved for $350,000. Um, you know, Jane, realtor, I've emailed you the pre-approval letter. Check your email. Happy home hunting in a group chat. That group chat you can name as, you know, Jana's home hunting team or Jana's home team, right? And then in that group chat, every time there's a status update for Jana's loan, you can text the group a picture of the status update. And it's cool. Like, if let's just say Jana had documents that she has not submitted yet, and the realtor is still out showing the buyer all these houses, wasting her time because we don't even know if they're approved, right? So this is a great text template you can text to them in the group that said, hey, just a reminder, we're still waiting on your documents or your disclosures have been sent out. Go, go ahead and log in and sign them. Or, you know, underwriting has been conditionally approved. Or um, your appraisal is done. If you don't want, if this is going to the buyer's agent, just delete the appraised value out of there. If if you want to tell everybody the loan's been locked, you can use this one. If you don't want to put the criteria for their lock information, don't use that one. Just delete this out and put something else in there. Um, and then here's a clear to close one. That's so pretty, you know, and it's eye-catching. And then- Very nice, loan, very nice. What about closed and funded? Congratulations, your loan is funded. In Florida, for example, um, well, since COVID, I would say it's in Maryland too. Um, a lot of the buyers and sellers don't attend the closing at the same time like they used to. Um, and in that respect, the seller is left wondering because the list in, listing agent doesn't have an update as to when they'll get their wire transfer from title, right? This is a way to help the listing agent avoid all those afternoon calls of where that wire is for that seller. Once the loan is funded, then send this text out. And then the realtor is super, the listing agent is super grateful to you because you took the time to let them know this added update that really has nothing to do with you and your buyer. Like you've done your job, you've moved on to the next one, right? Um, but this is a way to, this one is to introduce yourself. Just let you know, um, this can go to the buyer's agent or the listing agent or both. You could say I'm the mortgage broker working with Jana Doe, um, you know, on one, two, three, four, anywhere place. I'll keep you posted throughout the mortgage pro process. Feel free to reach out to me anytime. Here's myself. How grateful would the agent be to just get this simple freaking text from them? You know what I mean? Um, and then, you know, here's another one. A news update, your appraisal's been scheduled. The buyer agent isn't notified when the appraisal is scheduled. 
the listing agent knows because usually the you know AMC and the appraisal had to contact the listing agent to schedule it with the seller. But the buyer agent doesn't know. And if the buyer agent doesn't know, neither does the buyer. So as it is a part of the contingency of the contract, putting the buyer at risk for losing money, their deposit, for example, it is super important to keep the buyer and the buyer's agent informed of things they wouldn't know unless somebody told them, right? I mean, it's not necessarily our job, but it is. It is our job, especially if we want to avoid that whole telephone tag of the buyer agent calling us to ask us if the appraisal's been scheduled. And then inadvertently, right after that, the buyer agent calls the buyer and says, has the appraisal been scheduled? Then inadvertently after that, the buyer calls you to say, has the appraisal been scheduled? That's three and a half phone calls that you could avoid if you just told everybody that the appraisal has been scheduled. And I'm talking massive time management stuff here. You know what I mean? Like it's simple, but it's not. If, you know, if we could just have a system that automatically triggers us to remember and to send this one picture to this group chat when this happens, or you can use Zapier to do it. Um, Zapier, Zapier, tomato, tomato. Uh, you can literally just automate this text going out to whoever you know it needs to go out to at a specific time, and that is what my value is is to you know to the group, to my fellow edgers, to and that's just a little touch of my value. So, Colleen, out of all of these, um, you could do builder tours. You could do, um, this is one that I did, the home seller's guide, home buyer's guide. I'm working on one of these with an agent, the same girl, Amy, I mean, Tammy in my marketplace. I was working on this with her over the weekend. Look how beautiful this is. This is a buyer. Wow. You can literally set, help the agent come up with the, especially if they're newer, but I've seen agents of 20 years show buyers houses all day long because they don't have the objection handler dialogue or skill set to um, handle the objections of the buyer wanting to see everything, right? Or narrow down the search to the point and set the expectations, explaining to the buyer why it's in their best interest to narrow it down to five instead of going to see 20. And the number one reason after being an agent for 25 years, that I need the buyer to understand, we have to narrow this down to five showings. Because if you see 15, eight, or even seven houses today, by the end of the fifth house, you won't remember, if you go to the sixth house, you won't remember any of the houses You'll have the kitchens mix, mix matched in other properties. You'll have the bedroom numbers mix matched in properties you didn't even see. And you're like, literally, there's no way you can make a decision. And if you happen to have seen one of the houses of the five houses you saw on today, if you happen to be in love with the third one, then if you go see seven, eight, and nine, you're going to miss out on making an offer on the third one because you'll be so confused. Now, I promise, if I literally didn't do my job and I set you up to see five houses today and you don't like any of them, fire me. It means I wasn't listening when you told me what you wanted, right? You know, set the expectations, but also hold yourself accountable to making sure they trust you. They need to know you like you trust you. They need to trust that you're not going to show them some shabby crap. And they also need to trust you to listen to them. So as a loan officer, you can help your realtor partners show them how to set up the expectations through templates, see five properties. And, and I haven't edited these to, to that extent, but I do have one that I used to use that's got my content in it um, as a realtor. And I will show it to you right now. It's all the way down at the bottom. Probably put it in Rios or something. 
These are beautiful, Shauna. Thanks, Colleen. I'm super excited to have you come over to Edge. Um, (laughs) I'm excited uh, too. You know, not even for helping me and, you know, my, uh, my production, but to let me help others. This is literally like, yeah, I can't ask for a better, a better, um, you know, a better time for this. So here's some rage templates I did. Okay. So here's a home buyer workbook. Let me see if that's the one I want. I want to share the listing presentation. It's really what I want. I don't know. I'm going to go back to, let me go up here. Okay. So this is a, that's just a template. Let's see. Here's a home buyer workbook. Uh, here's one, another one I did. It's just a template. I did a very, very specific one. This is, Let's see if this is it. Nope. Let's show more. So my listing presentation. Here we go. I am going to use this one. So this presentation was done under the uh, branding of Real Estate One Shop Shop. Um, But I'm going to take you through the pages of this just so you can see what's in it. Um, so on this page, let me see if I can make this bigger so everybody who's blind like me can still see. Um, I literally just went in a little bit about myself. Um, this is from a realtor's perspective. Okay. So, um, right here, I said, I'm a realtor, right? Um, but this is a listing presentation, a buyer presentation. It's a everything presentation. So who this course is for, this doesn't necessarily need to be in there, but this is, this course closes the gap on the top eight issues. And these are consumer issues, transparency and accountability, tech integration, simplified processes, affordable housing, um, like down payment assistance, market statistics for various areas, community development grants, things like that community integration, education and financial literacy, all of these things can be placed in this book, okay? So um, this right here is just an outline that I put together um, for buyers and sellers, but this one is for the buyers. Here's the cover, okay? Um, And this could be literally printed, sent to staples to print and make little booklets for home buyer workshops if you want. but you can also, from here, after you go through the those little templates of, you know, table of contents, you can edit it to be yours. But this is where the juice gets good. So these are the instructions. How many of us, raise your hand, have experienced buyers that will text you the W-2, a picture from all the way across the room on the coffee table crooked, right? You can't see nothing. It, it looks like a... a a, you know, like a coffee cup holder on, you know, um, from your perspective, how many of them sent you screenshots of bank statements, right? So this helps you give them the link directly to the Apple scanner and the Droid scanner. It's a free scanner. You show them how, you know, it shows them they can take a picture from their phone, pop out all four corners, and it's a scanner right from their phone. How helpful. That's perfect. That's so helpful. Yeah. Um, One of the things my LOAs used to complain about all the time is, oh my God, how many times do I have to say I cannot take pictures? It's literally in the email introduction. We cannot accept pictures. So I created a a YouTube video explaining the 48 hour process, why I can't give you a pre-approval letter until we have all your documents and why I must see the numbers on the W-2s and the pay stubs, what I do with that information, I'm not just collecting it for the sheer sake of saying I have it. I need the data off of it, right? Um, And et cetera, et cetera. So this will help the borrower. You can record a YouTube video and embed it right here. 
of your 48 hour process. You can give links to the scanner minis. You can explain additional documents if they're a vet, you know, other things that are needed, a child support, bankruptcy docs. You could put all of Edge Home Financing license states, their disclosure right here. You can brand the colors to you, all this cool stuff. Um, now look at this. These are the things that you do and you don't do. Please do not open new any lines of credit, apply for furniture, move large amounts of money around, close any banks, bank accounts, quit your job, change jobs, change the hours you work, change your structure and pay from W-2 to 1099, you know, deposit any large deposits, lie or attempt to lie about anything, or keep secrets from your loan officer. These are the settlement snafus that will cause a buyer that if you don't ex explain, they've never bought a house before, a lot of people. <laughs> even, if the, even if they have, how many times have you told a person not to move large amounts of money between accounts? If they see this up front and you literally make them sign it, it will register. You could put this in your process and automate it with your broker, um, your broker agreement, automate it in a DocuSign, um, right from, I can give you the process of, but for Colleen, you and I, we're going to automate this in our, in our process, in our HoneyBook account. Okay. But for other people that don't have HoneyBook or don't want to use HoneyBook, this is something that they could do. This is what they have to do. Please do keep all of your records, keep receipts. If you're going to sell a car, make sure you have the Kelly Blue Book, you know, you know, and don't accept cash, things like that. These are the snafus that can go in a home buyer workshop too. You can do an entire home buyer seminar on this one template, this one page. And they'll be so grateful that they met you, you know, like yeah. you've gone off, sell their motorcycle and deposit eight grand in cash. Thanks for telling them that they can't do that. So this is the checklist of the mortgage, you know, of the application that you'll need all the application docs uploaded. You'll need a copy of the EMD, the contract. You'll need the initial loan disclosure signed all before it goes to underwriting. This is something that they don't know. They're not in the business. Even realtors don't know this. So how valuable are you now to realtors in your marketplace that don't know this? Yeah, you've thought of everything. I I am just well. When you've been doing it for as long as I have, I get tired of the repetitive. This is why I'm like, oh, great, another application, right? I get tired of the repetitive. This whole thing that I built will avoid burnout for any loan officer. So this video is my favorite, and I literally send this to everybody. I think I was at Nexa when I sent this, but I tell people, don't worry about the brand of the shirt I'm wearing. I don't have to be there for, <laughs> for this, for this uh, e instructions to be true for you. This is how to download a bank statement so an underwriter will accept them. You no longer have to jump on Zoom and show them how to do it or send some long text message or spend 45 minutes on the phone with somebody 65 years or older that's not tech savvy to show them how to do this. It's right here. Just automate the process. Check this out. House hunt cards. So I agree to make a reasonable offer if we rate the properties that we see four stars or better. This is something a buyer agent can use to set expectations, correct? This is what you're looking for. How many bedrooms? How many baths? Garage, must-haves, must-not-haves. Minimum square feet, separate laundry room, den, library, ingress, swimming pool, sprinkler system, has HOA, blah, 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 blah. and then <laughs> you can literally print these in black and white and send them in PDF format to your agents. Send them a PDF file of ten cards. This is for your showing for Saturday. You know, share them. Give this to your buyer. Print this. Print these out. Give it to your buyers before you're showing on Saturday. Let them fill these out. So everybody is aware that you helped this agent save the other half of their Saturday afternoon by not showing them 15 houses.
but you've also helped them narrow it down, right? And you've helped them set expectations. And of course, your logo is, you know, right here. So you can literally brand yourself right here, right in front of them. Boom. Right? So um, that's just some of the examples. And this, this template has, I mean, it goes into dialogue, seller merchandising review for a property listing, a honey-do list for a seller. Because um, the listing presentation portion starts uh, for sellers, starts over here at page 24. So there's buyer content and then there's seller content. And then at the very end, check this out. Like, how cool would it be if you could have a buyer fill this out, okay, and give you a five-star review, okay, and then save, do a screenshot, take a picture, you know, snip it, save this as a, um, a JPEG, you know, whatever, and post it to your social media. How would that help you build your business, Colleen? I did a buyer workshop or I helped a buyer through the process of being pre-approved uh, after working with their agent and the closing and closing on their loans. They sent me an evaluation of my service and I was very satisfied. Five, 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 you know, all the way down. And then, you know, they post it. You can post it once they have, once you have it back, you can post it to your social media. You can literally type, you could do this, type their name, Jane Fire, okay? Uh, exit Realty, right? Um, this is the company name, or this maybe this is the agent. Realtor, okay, Exit Realty. Um, this is the realtor evaluating your service, okay? And then there's, you can also do one for the buyer evaluating your service. So now you can create one that's for a realtor to evaluate the service and for the buyer to evaluate your service. Uh, literally, all I got to do is go, hmm, let me uh, duplicate this page. Now this one is for the realtor. And this one is for the buyer, oops. Yeah, um, so. Our buyer agent name. And this is buyer's names. And this is Jane, a realtor, and this is um, Mr. Mr. Murphy, right? So that's just an example. Um, I don't want to let this meeting go on forever. And, um, and I think I got one minute left. So Colleen, do you have any questions? No, I just, I just think this is amazing. I don't. So when you come over to edge, Colleen, I am going to brand all of these templates for you and I, for oh, our man. four states, okay? Um, the very day you do your NMLS transfer, okay? And yeah. um, I'm going to hang up on this Zoom and I'm going to call you on the phone in like five minutes. I okay. Knows I'm all congested, okay? All right. All right Thank I'll you so much. Today. You're welcome.